and that one of the local heritage mansions in our um, area has been bulldozed and it, it sort of breaks your heart when you see beautiful old buildings uh, go under the wrecking ball just to this, for the sake of development. There's another such uh, development that's taking place in Melbourne or there is a campaign going on to save a, a beautiful old hostel in Melbourne. Sophie Patterson is a campaigner who's uh, one of the people who's been charged with or who's trying to save that building. It's called the Princess Mary Hostel in the morning, uh, the Princess Hostel, as I said, in Melbourne, and she joins us now. Good morning to you, Sophie. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm not too bad at all. Uh, the, tell us a little bit about the Princess Mary Hostel and why it's uh, such an uh, important old building. Yeah, the uh, Princess Mary Club was built in 1926 on the Wesley Church site in Lonsdale Street um, and it was built for country women suffering from gender inequalities and unemployment during the Depression. Um, there were 70 rooms and it opened up a lot of opportunities for women to work and study in the city. Um, and there's lots of stories about women who stayed here, for example, Elsa Trundle, who was uh, became one of Australia's first women architects. Um, and it's been a really important place for the history of women um, and, and I think still has of great importance in today's um, society given how, given how topical women's issues are and there's a six month waiting list for women's accommodation in the city um, and the Uniting Church argues that it has no purpose but I just, I, 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 I beg, to, beg to disagree. When was it last used as a women's refuge? In 1988. Um, the Wesley Church closed it down saying it didn't have any purpose anymore and it's been sitting there derelict for 27 years. Now is it important because of its historical significance or is it architecturally important as well? I think it's um, got um, significant features architecturally. Um, it's Gothic and Tudor um, and if you actually have a look at the building behind what the, the Wesley Church has, has let happen to it, um, you'd be amazed, I think, at how, how well it could be restored. But unfortunately, because the Wesley Church have left ivy growing all over it and windows open and pigeons coming in and out and roof le roofs leaking, um, it kind of looks in a bit of a mess. But certainly, we've had um, three or four smaller commercial developers who would like to um, keep this going as a women's accommodation centre or a boutique hotel, um, and there's no reason it can't be restored. But certainly the Wesley Church have done nothing um, on this on this site for 27 years and it is quite run down. It must be a bit galling to you because I, I, I believe your grandfather was Alfred Nicholas. He was a bit of a philanthropist and he actually gave a bit of money to the Wesley Church. He did. Um, he was one of the co-founders with his brother George uh, of Aspro. Um, and he was a very um, strict Methodist and his purpose in life was to help the poor and vulnerable. And... Um, his goal in life, yeah, was to, to help those in need. So he gave over $50 million to, in, in today's value to this um, Wesley site, um, $12 million, million specifically to the Princess Mary Club. And that was how I originally got involved because I was angry at the, you know, the change of the purpose of the donation. But then I kind of, um, the more I um, dug into it, I got more angry about the Uniting Church who were saying that they couldn't finance for financial reasons uh, restore it, but they'd never looked into any sort of grants or philanthropic donations. Um, and there were, well, there were plenty of other options for the, for it. Um, it was Heritage listed in 2005 by Heritage um, Victoria, who said it was really important to save then. Uh, but unfortunately, the Heritage Act seems quite defunct now because um, Heritage Victoria don't really have any power to to ensure compliance, and hence why we're losing all our heritage buildings. I mean, there's been outrage that 16 St George's Road and, and Andrew Newbolt's house in Edward Street Q have been pulled down, and, and there seems to be this sort of attitude that we've got to have development at all costs. Um, it's been a particularly hard year. I know, as I mentioned, the, the local mansion near me called Frogmore, which a lot of residents dug their heels in and tried to save, but just had no hope. And the, 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 couple you mentioned there as well, and I know there are a number of them in other states. It is this mantra of development at all costs. Is it something that's driven by just developers, or is it driven by local councils, or is it driven by state governments? Who, who are you blame the blame at? Well, I think in, the, in this case, unfortunately, um, it's the church. Um, the church has, been, has, has got other options that are better and more appropriate for this site. Um, but unfortunately, it's, they're motivated by, by money. And um, even the Melbourne City Council um, took that into account when they voted in favour of it. They said this was an overdevelopment and the development was too big. 
um, in 2011, and a development on this site was refused by the planning minister. Um, and rather than go back and, and revise for a more appropriate development, the church has now submitted one double the size. And that's why it seems a bit ludicrous that this would even be um, considered by the minister. But unfortunately, that's the process we've got. Um, that it's all sitting in the, in the future of this whole complex. It's in the hands of one man now. There are situations and cases like this all around Australia where local residents are getting up in arms and taking these things to either administrative tribunals or to their local councils to try and stop them. The process for you, it's taken a number of months and as you say, it's been particularly frustrating. Um, what advice would you give to, to people who are wanting to, to fight to save uh, old, old style properties and old style historic Residence. Well, it is a bit of a frustrating and ridiculous process, <laughs> to be honest. Um, uh, Heritage Victoria is supposed to be the ones that you should, can lobby to um, to save these buildings, but yet um, they really don't have a lot of power to do anything. Um, the and Heritage say, Council. So even the Heritage listing won't necessarily save you. No, because uh, Princess Mary Club has been Heritage listed for the last ten years. So why do they um, bother even listing them? Exactly. The Heritage Council um, are currently doing a review because they have realised that, you know, people can just buy these houses and, and leave them there to neglect and then finally get a demolition order. So they actually are, the Heritage Council actually are um, doing a review at the moment and you can submit um, opinions um, to the Heritage Council. By the time they've finished, that's probably going to be too late at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it will the be, Bob, maybe. But we've just got to keep hoping and we've just got to keep lobbying the, 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 the Minister and and, um, and, uh, and try and show him how passionate we are and how important this building is just socially and architecturally and, and how ridiculously big this 39-storey office tower is for this, this site. It's not even appropriate development. It's too big, it's going to shade, it's on the sunny side, so it's going to shade the whole of Lonsdale Street. It's dwarfing every neighbourhood um, building and it doesn't even meet the separate criteria of urban development. And there's some really, really nice options that you could choose for this building in the city they've got where they've kept the facade and they've done the development at the back. Um, and there's so many other options. And for the Melbourne City Council to say that, um, you know, that, that this is, this is um, that they've chosen this because something is better than nothing, it's not just, it's just really not acceptable. You see uh, more and more of those uh, old facades of buildings being incorporated into a, a new build a design and it's, a, it's, it's pretty interesting to look at, it's pretty interesting architecture. Yeah, I quite like it. Them. The well, it excellent. keeps your heritage, but, and I, and I don't think anyone's against development, I think we all understand that that has to happen. Um, but it's just doing appropriate development. And I think that's where we're losing it at the moment in Melbourne. We're kind of, a lot of people, I'm getting emails from people all the time about this, just sort of feeling that we're kind of losing our soul, which is a bit sad given, um, you know, that, that uh, we, we all do love our history and our heritage. And Adelaide Summer. Trying to retire, Bob.